Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Egberto Willis your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Today we're going to be touching on a subject that we touch on frequently because it is of that, mo- that amount of importance, if you will. We are going to be talking about uh, Medicare for all. Of course, one of the reasons that we decided to do this again is because the misinformation has started. Let me tell you what's going on with Medicare for all. It's gaining traction. Americans are starting to believe. Americans are starting to see the truth. Americans are starting to see that if every other industrialized country in the world has some sort of Medicare for All program and they are, their costs are better and the people are living longer, the people are healthier, then what's wrong with America? Are Americans somehow genetically different than the rest of the world? Of course not. So, The reality is, as more people start to um, realize the truth, as we become the uh, arbiters of truth, if you will, more people are going to do what? They are going to start saying, wait a minute, Medicare for all simply makes more sense. And in that process of making more sense, it is something that we ought to consider and there are bills already out there. Folks, uh, remember, if you're just joining the show, one of the things that we first ask you to do is immediately share the program. Share the program on your Internet. Share the program on your Twitter, Tumblr, and everywhere that you can because that is how we are going to get traction. It is important if we are going to get the body politic change. It is important if we are going to allow folks to, or not allow folks, if it, it is important if we are going to make the necessary change to effect change that in effect what we do is we start from now making sure that all our programs get the visibility that they need to get again uh this is a call-in show as well 646-716-5812 again that number is 646-716-5812 if you're just joining us again please remember share these programs share these programs it is imperative it is of utmost necessity that we do so especially since we have the forces that continue continuously try to 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 cramp us today's a program on medicare for all what do you think the, the the cyber guys are going to do as we try to gain folks to watch this type of program they don't want this shown the media is not going to cover it in fact the fortune magazine the story that we're going to cover today how did that author get to publish without a name there was nobody to refute him in the article that he published the fort- the, the, the the economist seen by thousands hundreds of thousands of people and there is a story that is a hit list, a hit topic against Medicare for All. And somehow, somehow, no author, somehow bad information refuted. Folks, if you're just joining us, please go ahead and share the program. That is how we are going to get traction. Michael Rudnan, welcome aboard. Uh, uh, welcome aboard the show. We need you folks to do so, so soon, so kindly. Anyhow, um. I want to remind everybody, what is what is it time for right now? It is time to vote. Vote, 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 and again, vote. In Texas right now, what we have is uh, uh, we're in, we're in uh, our early vote stage. You can vote between 7 in the morning and 7 in the afternoon or 7 in the evening, whichever one you call it. And that ends on Friday, and then, of course, that then the real election, where people go to their particular polling locations, begin on tu- or is on Tuesday. And I think those polls in Texas are between seven and seven again. Now, I want to remind folks: the great thing in Texas about early voting is it doesn't matter where you are in your county; you can go ahead and vote at any voting location in your county, irrespective of what precinct you live in. However, on election day, it is different. On election day, you must vote at your precinct. 
on election day, you must vote at your precinct. So uh, what's the best way to vote now? Go out and vote today. Go out and vote during early voting because, again, it is the easiest way to do it and you are able to do so quite easily. Um, what else do we need to talk about before we get into the show? Um, Donald Trump has finally attacked Paul Ryan because he Paul Ryan went against his tenet of getting rid of birthright citizenship. I want to ask folks a question. If somebody is born in this country and uh, somehow we decide that they are no longer citizens of this country, why would the con- some other country accept them as citizens? I mean, they weren't born there. If you're born in the United States, you are a United States citizen. And yes, there's a 14th Amendment to the Constitution that, uh, is it 14th? I think it's a 14th, that guarantees that. Folks, if you're just joining us, please give, uh, please remember to share this on your wall, share this on your Twitter, Tumblr, everywhere else. That is the only way we are going to get traction and make sure that people are able to see what we're talking about. Anyway, today's show, the title of today's show is Medicare for All, Hit Job in the Economist, Debunked by a Doctor Who Knows. Subtitle of the show, During the Affordable Care Act debate, supporters allowed lies and misinformation to cauterize before full rebuttal. We cannot do that now that Medicare for All has traction. When I say Medicare for All has traction, that's exactly what I mean. People are starting to see the light. People are starting to see that it makes sense to have some sort of a national health care system that actually work, that actually people can afford, that everybody is insured, that health care is a right. We have to be there. A doctor, Dr. Anad Bhatt, who have listened to Politics Done Right recently, sent me a note about an article in The Economist that is best described as a hit job on Medicare for All. I asked him to rebut the article so I could blog it and get the information out. He obliged. His rebuttal will be our blog of the week today. And that is what I'm saying we bring as uh, Politics Done Right as these types of independent type programs. Why it is? Why is that? You're not going to get a whole lot of this information on the mainstream media. And why is that the case? Well, the reality is in the chaos that is our healthcare system, a lot of people make a whole lot of money. A whole lot of people make a whole lot of money. They depend on our system being corrupt. They depend on on, on there being a whole lot of different rules that are not co- co- that that are that are not congruent rules that are. One way, one place, one way, the other. That's what they depend on because in that chaos, they are able to make money. So what I'm going to do with the program at first is to start by going through that article at, with the rebuttals. So what what the, doc, the kind doctor did was he allowed the, he, he, he wrote the, or rather he cut the pieces of the article and then he immediately rebutted. So that's what we're going to do. In effect, I'm going to do that. And if you have any questions on the screen or whatever, I'll take that then. But right now, I don't see that anybody is asking any questions quite yet. Welcome, Lawrence Sim. Welcome, Kathleen Morin Morgan. Welcome, Michael Rodnin. Uh, Thank you guys for being here. Please, again, folks, remember to share the program. Uh, This program gets seen a whole lot in podcasts, but I sure wish we had more participation live, like people calling in. The telephone number is 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Folks! Do you know what time it is? It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, it's time for the weekly blog post. And here is the blog post for you. And it goes as follows. Uh, Let me get to it first. Doctor destroys a hit job in the Economist Against Medicare for All. That's the title of the, the blog of the post. And it goes as follows. What appears to be an authorless article appeared in The Economist that attempted to do a hit job on Medicare for All. The article's title, Could Medicare for All Become a Real Thing? If you see an article like that in The Economist, that means people are starting to really get worried that, oh my God, Medicare for All is getting traction. And I tell you something great. Medicare for All is a name people understand because they understand what the word Medicare means, and then they understand for all. So that is very easy to sell. In the past, we always talk about single pair, single pair, single pair, single pair. And people don't quite get the flavor of that. I mean, it's simple, but for some reason, again, it's, it's different. Well, Medicare for All is a single pair system, so we can call it single pair Medicare for All. But uh, again, for the sake of this show, we're going to be just referring to it as Medicare for All. Anyhow, the t- article titled, Could Medicare for All Become real, a Real Thing? 
Uh, for those who don't know what Single Pair Medicare for All is, visit the page that we have on the blog of the week. I have a page on my uh, on my site called Single Pair Healthcare Now that has a description of Medicare for All and it also provides you with resources, any kind of resources that you would need to follow up and learn exactly what that is. Get rid of the lies that normally the right tells or not even only the right but many neoliberals, a lot of folks simply don't want there to be a, a system where we get rid of the insurance companies because guess what? The insurance companies, uh, medical insurance companies are big donors to all parties. They keep all your bases covered. I'm going to talk about all the, the, the lobbyists and so forth after the show, uh, after, after I do the blog of the week because a lot of people think, okay, great. If the Democrats win, everything is okay and they think they're going home to sleep. The reality, my dear brothers and sisters, is when the Democrats win, because they will be winning the House of Representatives for sure, and there's a good chance that they will win the Senate. I think the polls right now are undercounting what we call Gen Zs and uh, undercounting millennials. That's my theory, uh, but we'll see if my theory pans out or not. I think there's a good chance we win both the Senate and the House, irrespective of what 538 says. Okay, that said. Dr. Anand Bhatt, an advocate for good health care for all Americans, deconstructed the article that was clearly an attempted hit job. As Medicare for All, as Medicare for All ga uh, garners more support, these false, seemingly informative articles will spontaneously emerge. We must be aware and refute them at every turn. We cannot allow the fallacies to cauterize as we did during the Affordable Care Act debate. We can only talk about refuting these articles, people. You have to blog about it. You have to write about it in your fa on your Facebook page. So in other words, if I come out with a blog, this blog that refutes all of that, that other article, you need to repost this blog. You need to reshare share this blog. You need to do all these things with this blog and write a little something about it as well. Why do we have to do that? Because what happens is this. When people are doing their search at home and they hear some crazy lie and they go home and they check it, if you go ahead and check it, there's a good possibility that instead of getting the good article, they could get a bad article. So what you want to do is you want to ensure that all these good articles are well or are, are well indexed or well referenced and also have a hell of a lot of links to them. And that's why we always ask when we write blogs like this, share, share, share. When we have programs like this, we beg, share, share, share. That's the only way truth gets out. If we don't do this, what really starts to occur is these guys win because they have what you call document factories that just put out blatant lies on the internet. When you do a search, because it's indexed and SEO'd perfectly, which means search engine optimization perfectly, their, their product or their articles get a chance to be the sole person or the sole article of reference. You can change that. We don't need to have a lot of money to do it. When we write articles like this, make sure to share it. Not only share it, but make sure to reference it. If you're writing something on Facebook, reference this website that had this article. If you, if you're wherever you are, make sure to reference these articles so that, so that we have an overwhelming presence of truth to rebut the overwhelming presence of lies that these guys put out there. Anyhow, as Medicare for All garners more support, these false, seemingly informative articles will spontaneously emerge. We must be aware and refute them at every turn. We cannot allow the fallacies. We cannot allow them to cauterize as we did during the Affordable Care Act. Remember, throw grandma away with, uh, throw grandma over the cliff, uh, the death panels. All those things are rather silly. They are silly. No politician left, right, middle, or whatever would create death panels. No politician left, right, or in the middle would throw, uh, the, the, throw the baby out with the dishwater. Nobody left, right, or what. So when, when, we gave, when the news gave those things traction, people then sat down and asked, oh, my God, could that really be possible? Could people really be doing that? So we have to be proactive in the way we are talking about Medicare for all. We have to be proactive in challenging every single lie that emerges. Every single lie must be covered right away, however simplistic, because what these guys do is they build a narrative based on small little lies that then cauterize into the brains of folks and then allow them to be resistant to truth. That's how it works. Anyhow, 
The rebuttal on Medicare of, uh, for all fallacies follows. And here it goes. This is from the article. The article read as follows. Picture, if you can, Bernie Sanders, the Democratic Socialist Senator, as a young lad of four. That is how old Mr. Sanders... And by the way, it's clear this article was written by a Brit because the way they spell some of the, uh, the colors and so forth, they have the British spelling. So we actually imported... Uh, the Economist imported or, or used somebody... Well, I guess, well, I'm not sure. Is the Economist a British rag? I'm, I'm not sure. But anyhow, it is clearly it wasn't an American writer who wrote it. Picture, if you can, Bernie Sanders, a Democratic Socialist senator, as a young lad of four. That is how old Mr. Sanders was in 1945 when Harry Truman announced his vision for single payer, in which the government pays all costs. Lyndon Johnson, backed by crushing congressional majorities, resurrected the idea in 1965 when he signed laws creating Medicare, government-run insurance for the elderly and Medicaid, a program for the very poor and disabled. Now... Now, at the age of 77, Mr. Sanders would like at least to enact a single-payer system under the banner Medicare for All. The idea is how rather popular when polled. Nearly 75%, 75% of Americans declare a favorable view, as do 87% of self-identified Democrats. Think about that. Ahead of the midterms, uh, Fealty to the idea has become a litmus test for uh, prog progressive voters. The popularizing of Medicare for all is largely own, uh, or owing to Mr. Sanders evangelizing during the 2016 presidential primaries when the idea was lampooned by Hillary Clinton as unworkable. Now, I want to qualify that. Notice Hillary Clinton, a Democrat who said Medicare for all was unworkable. If you want to know why Democrats lose, they don't go out there on a limb. They don't go out there and say, this is what we are going to do for you. If Medicare for all can work in Canada, if Medicare for all can work in England, if Medicare for all can work everywhere, how dare, how dare a Democrat say Medicare for all is unworkable. Hillary did that. Hillary lost the Electoral College. She won the people, but she lost the Electoral College. Anyhow, since then, five likely Democratic presidential contenders, Cory Booker, Christine Gilbrand, Kamala Harris, Mr. Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren have endorsed Medicare for All. Should one of them win, the expectation that he or she would act on that slogan will be enormous. And you know there's going to be the socialized medicine thing, and to which I'm going to say, folks, those of us in the progressive field, those of us with a microphone, those of us with blogs, it is time for us to take out the stigma out of socialized medicine. Socialized come, socialize come from the word social, social security, things that are done in the, uh, uh, for the, for what, what do we call it, the commons, things that are done together. We, have, we should have an economy, two types of economies, the portion that is socialized and the portion that is free enterprise. Notice I didn't say capitalism because that's another subject that I'd like to touch on some other time. But free enterprise, where you design and you do as you want as a business person, as long as you fall within regulations, and the socialized portion, the things that belong in the common streets, roads, health care. I have others that I think belong there, but that is beside this point of the show right now. First, though, Democrats need to decide what Medicare for All actually means. The details of health policy resemble brain surgery. The appeal of a slogan is that nobody needs to bother with the stullifying details. Some Democratic politicians and left-of-center think tanks have put forward more modest proposals under the aegis of uh, Medicare for All. They include allowing more people to qualify for Medicaid, government-provided insurance for the poorest, lowering the age of requirements to Medicare, and introducing a so-called public option, a state-run insurer to, complete with, to compete with existing private ones. These are more accurately labeled as Medicare for More, says Sarah Collins of the Commonwealth Fund, a health think tank. The virtue of these ideas is that they are incrementalist and would require less federal spending than a fully-fledged single-payer system. The chief shortcoming, as Robert Benton, a professor of health uh, policy at Harvard, puts it, is that terms like public option doesn't raise the blood pressure of the public. But here is the deal, brothers and sisters. Dr. Anand rebutes, re rebuts that particular paragraph. He says as follows. Here we have some evasion by ignoring the fact that Bernie 
has a specific bill in the Senate and the House has a specific bill, specifically H.R. 676, which I've been talking about for a very, very long time, for years. If he or she wants to talk about Bernie, Economist is Anonymous, they should talk about his bill and not what other Democrats may be saying. That's important. So anyway, the article continues. As a result, none of the proposals has received a, a, as much attention as the detailed plan put forward by Mr. Sanders, which goes the full Monty. Medicare would become the single pair of all insurance claims. It would be free at the point of use. Premiums, deductibles, and other payments would nearly be eliminated. It would also upend the healthcare system by doing away with employer-sponsored insurance. The majority, 56%, 56%, of working age Americans are enrolled in these schemes. 71% of those covered by them say they are content, unlike the other uh, Medicare for All pitches. If you like your plan, you must certainly cannot keep it. Oh, oh, that is so scary. I bet if you have a plan where you have to just go into the doctor and see the doctor and not have to fill out cards or go with a card or a company card or whatever, even the folks with company insurance would say, Se la vi, adios, ya no te quiero. Adios. Bye-bye. So anyway, Dr. Renan refutes. I do not know why they emphasize that 71% of 56% of working American age are happy with their plans. 71% of 56% is less than the majority. <laughs> Math. 0.71 times 0.56 is less than 50%. So... It's amazing to me that they would say, oh, most Americans are satisfied with their health care. This is how they fool you. Anyway, Americans are happy with the plans. This clearly ignores the elderly and the too young to work or the dependent on employer-based insurance or the fact that most people are not happy with their health care system. Again, folks, this is how they fool you. This article said the following. 71% of uh, uh, it says the majority 56 percent of working americans age uh, age are enrolled in a in these schemes in, in the employer-based insurance and 71 percent of those covered love it or like it okay good so we take that at face value but please do the math they make it look like the majority of people by using 71 percent and 56 percent by using those two numbers to say most people like it. Well, the way you figure out if most people like it is you find out how many people have employer insurance and how many people are satisfied. 0.71 times 0.56 says less people, less than half, are satisfied. I don't understand how these people come across with these numbers a lot of times. Anyhow, continuing. The article continues, to fund all this, federal spending would need to increase by an estimated $32 trillion over 10 years. Notice they do it over 10 years, right? So it's a big number. It's not $3.2 trillion a year. It's $32 trillion a year. If the government used its power to reduce the cost of drugs and of administration, this could, according to the estimates at American Center, a think tank, result in a 2 trillion dollar less health spending overall otherwise so here you got the the Koch brothers think tank actually come and say oh overall health care spending if we did medicare for all would actually cost two trillion dollars less they're saying that but they don't say it, it because you know these are scientific studies and they don't want to lie but they don't say it in a way that you say oh wait a minute so you're telling me that it will cost the total expenditure for health care would drop by two to two trillion dollars and at the same time, everybody, instead of only 70% of Americans, would be covered. Um, that says it all. So let me read Dr. Batt's response. Dr. Batt says, this is the key lie by a Koch brothers study. $32 trillion over 10 years is designed to make the number so big, it scares everyone. And today's Halloween, so you're scared, aren't you? No one talks about their 10-year salary or their 10-year company or department budget. You know why? Because they don't know. 
The Economist says federal spending, $32 trillion over 10 years. What does that mean? American health spending is $3.3 trillion per year, all sources. Medicare spending is $672 billion, and Medicaid spending, state and federal, is $564 billion. So excluding VA, CHIP, prisons, military, and IRS tax breaks, we are already over a trillion dollars of current government spending. Overall, the federal and state and local governments spend 48% of health care spending. Medicare for all would eliminate private health insurance spending. You already pay for it via premiums or reduced wages instead by a Medicare tax. So you're not going to be spending on premiums anymore. There will simply be a Medicare tax. So let's say you're paying $1,000 a month. Your Medicare tax may be $500 a month, a savings. Okay? Instead of playing Blue Cross, every check you pay would pay a bigger Medicare tax. You already pay Medicare tax right now, but it is only for the elderly, and that is something like 3 point something percent of your uh, salary. When you look at FICA and all that stuff, you see that 3 point something percent is extracted every, and it's 1 point something percent for the employer, 1 point something percent for the individual. Anyhow, continuing. You already pay Medicare tax right now, but it is only the elderly. For 95% of people, this will save you money. 95% of people would save money. It, is also, it also makes the increase not $3.3 trillion, but a mere $1.76 trillion, which would be using their ridiculous 10-year budget increase in federal revenue. However, this is less money out of your paycheck than paying Aetna or Blue Cross. They then point out that this would save $2 trillion over 10 years. as $200 billion annually. So instead of annual health spending between 3 and $3.4 trillion, it would be around $3.2 trillion. The benefits would be much, much better than we presently have with reduced or eliminated co-pays and deductibles and fewer administration costs. No in-network and out-network nonsense either. It can also fund a two-year salary guarantee to people who would lose jobs in billing so transition costs are funded in the savings. So here it is. All the arguments that they would make. Oh, a lot of people are going to get laid off because we don't need all those people in billing anymore. All right. We include two years of we include two years of salaries for those people who are going to get laid off. So we're going to pay those people who get laid off until they find jobs. Two years. Wow. Generous. That's the transition cost from a system that is bloated with a whole lot of people who shouldn't be working to a system that is efficient. Wow. And the difference again is everybody is covered every single american is covered for less money that it costs us to just cover a few folks it is not rocket science they want to make it seem difficult the plutocracy wants to see it difficult because what that means is all those people making monies on by getting a cut of everything they employ more people, they get a cut of all those people's salary. They employ more, they have more paperwork, they get a cut of having to buy more. I mean, it's, it's a racket. Our healthcare system is a racket, and every industrialized system has seen it thus far. All right, continuing with the article. It would still be hard to get through. While the taxes are upfront and real, belief in savings down the line requires some faith, says Larry Levitt of the Kaiser Family Foundation, a healthy a health policy think tank. Republicans derided the much more modest Obamacare as spendthrift socialization of American health care. Even Democratic-led states that pondered enacting single-payer on their own balked when the cost became apparent. Efforts in Vermont, Mr. Sanders' own home state, stalled once it became clear that a 11.5% surtax on payrolls and premiums up to 9.5% of income would be needed to fund single-payer insurance. Public support dropped sharply once voters are reminded that taxes would have to rise to pay for the bill. It all depends on how you tell them, right? If you tell them, look, your taxes are going to go up by $1,000. Or let's say your taxes are going to go up by $6,000 a year. 
But that is that ten thousand dollars that you used to give to Etna, that you give to Blue Cross, you no longer have to give it. The amount of money that you have in your pocket is more. But you have to make the case. Democrats have to be bold. Progressives have to be bold. They have to simply tell the truth. It is not their fear of telling the truth that's the problem. It's who are funding them, who are the lobbyists paying for them. That is the problem. Democrats and Republicans alike. Later on, we talk about how that has to be mitigated after Democrats win in November. The problems identified by Sanders are nonetheless real. America is, along, uh, is among large developed countries in lacking universal health care. It's alone among large developed countries in lacking universal health care. Even after Obamacare, 12% of adults are uninsured, and it's worse now. As Trump came in, a lot more people got uninsured because of the Trump sabotage of the Affordable Care Act. Folks that haven't voted yet, folks that are listening, that is yet another reason why you cannot, why you must not. And here I am, a progressive, supposed to be relative, well, I am biased, uh, progressively biased. But you should, nobody in their right minds right now should allow Republicans to rule. And the reason why it is a, it is a danger to your health. It is a danger to your health care. There's no two ways about it. If one person says they're going to cut it, and the other person says, well, we're going to talk about starting to, to um, make med- create Medicare for all so that all Americans are, in, are insured. Which makes more sense? It's simple. Folks, uh, f- after the blog of the week, if you want to call in, s- in fact, you can call in now. It'll put you in a queue. 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Going back to, to the article. The problems identified by Sanders are nonetheless real. America is alone among large developed countries in lacking universal coverage. Even after Obamacare, 12% of adults are uninsured. For this, Americans pay 17% of GDP, the most in the OECD club of mostly rich countries. Government-run health programs can reduce costs by eliminating administrative costs, private profits, and using their dominant position to keep prices low. But none of the European systems for which Mr. Sanders draws his inspiration are purely single-payer. Many use a mix of public programs and supplementary private insurance to ensure universal coverage, cost sharing, along with subsidies to those who cannot afford it or the norm. And here's a rebuttal from Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Anand Bhatt. This is extremely misleading. Sanders' program is copying Canada, Taiwan, and South Korea. There is no single-payer insurance systems in Europe that use a single government insurance. France and Germany use a third system called social health insurance, which is complicated but not at all comparable to Canada. To compare Sanders' program to France or Germany, which has lots, lots of, by American standards, very minute copays, is ridiculous. We have very high out-of-pocket costs compared to Europe. And that's a fact. I've, I, I, during Occupy Kingwood, we sat at the corner and people would just show up. Some people in, uh, uh, would complain. Some people would show up. Uh, they will be in favor of what we're doing. They'll, they'll, share, they, they'll have like minds with us. And I remember one woman came to, the, uh, to us and she said she was in shock. She said, I am used to the American healthcare system. Well, you know, you go to a doctor, you pay a whole lot of money. Whatever you do, you pay a lot of money out of pocket. She says, I got sick, real sick in Germany. They didn't ask for anything. I went there, gave them my name, showed them my passport. I got health care, and I got out of there with a $20 bill. And then she said, I went to the drugstore, and I paid, I think, $6 or so for my Medicare med- med- medication. She said, interestingly, when she got back home, There was a check waiting in her mailbox from Germany. She overpaid for her medicine, which already was dirt cheap. 
And people say, well, you know, one of the reasons that uh, you guys are, we have high health insurance is that we're subsidizing the rest of the world by developing these drugs that then the rest of the world buy for cheap. It's a lie. It's a complete fabricated lie. And we have to let people know these truths. Most research on drugs are conducted by our tax dollars. When they're ready to get to the marketing stage, that is when private entities take over. And when they're ready to market it, they market the drugs and they take all the profits. Is that fair? No. What I think we should start having is it is time that any drug who had its genesis with taxpayer dollars should share in the profits equally. And I repeat, every drug developed by, by the American taxpayer, any drug whose genesis is the American taxpayer should also, also reap the rewards of profit, whatever profit it gets. That is the only thing that makes sense. Anyhow, uh, the rebuttal from, uh, uh, the, the, the continue with the article, nor is Medicare itself so simple. A currently constituted Medicare advantage is separate from hospitals, part A, other medical costs, part B, and prescription drugs, part D, and part C allows for privately run Medicare advantage plans that offer supplemental service and replace parts A, parts B. Got that all? So we have Medicare part A, B, C, and D. And by the way, I am nev I've never been in favor of Part C because that is, I think that, that has a 20% premium or something like that that the government pays these companies to give these services. So I have never been a fan of Part C, though a lot of people like it because they kind of feel they're in a club. And, you know, it gives them a membership to a gym and all that good stuff, right? Anyhow, and Anne refutes that. He says, Medicare Part A and Part B may change. Medicare Advantage provided through contractor costs more by all GAO studies for the same benefits. So we are, to, to give private companies a piece of the action, we pay more. More money we pay, the government does, just so that private companies can enter, enter Medicare. That's called Medicare Part C. Private companies delivering government programs cost more for the same benefits, 11%. Part D was designed very corruptly during the Bush administration and should have been publicly run and be automatically enrolled with the other Medicare's. This should be automatic. It isn't because, well, drunk companies want a piece of the action. They don't want real competition. They just want that big, big check. That's how it works. Okay, continue with the article. For most Americans enrolled in the program, none of these services is actually free at the point of use, as Mr. Sanders' bill proposes. The agency that administers medicine issues regulations that hospitals say impose billions in additional compliance costs. Code and procedures for billing pr uh, purposes is now a cottage industry employing 206,000 people and is projected to grow to thir by 13% in 10 years. Arguably, it has too much coverage in some dimensions. It pays for every treatment under the sun as opposed to Medicaid on the or the Canadian system. But... It's completely lacking in catastrophic coverage, says Amy uh, Finkelstein, a health economist at MIT, who recently won a MacArthur Genius Grant. Medicare does provide health care at decent cost, but it is nothing like as efficient as its devotees claim. That's not true. It has over between a 1% and 3% overhead. A more pragmatic agenda would focus on boosting competition in health industry exchanges and reversing the cuts regulatory change and work requirements imposed by the Trump administration. Even this would take a lot of legislation. If Democrats finish all that, they could then allow customers to buy Medicare coverage from the government, the non-coercive public option. The difficulty with this agenda is that it is, does not fit into a bumper sticker. The advantage is that it might one day get through Congress, and Dr. Anand responds to that as follows. Again, no leading organizations were consulted or Bernie Sanders office from what I can read here. Physicians for National Health Plan, which I have interviewed the president on my show several times, the founder was President Obama's doctor, has more research and facts from very reliable publications for every single claim they make. Dental care 
would also be covered as well. The waste is that high with our system. <sighs> what will it take? But there's one math problem that these guys would like you to really, I mean, they, they, they really want you to forget. They want you to forget that math exists, right? And how do you forget that math exists? Uh, it is simple what they're doing here. And I, I, I want to go over this uh, sort of in, in detail. This is what they're telling you. They're telling you that somehow a bill comes in and uh, somebody, uh, a government employee, pays that bill. That's the only, the only expense other than the health care bill there is that the government has to pay that employee who is going to pay the bill. Nothing more. If you have for-profit insurance in the mix, there is a whole plethora of things that have to get paid. You have to pay advertisers. You have to, because there are several insurance companies, each one of them wants your business, so they got to advertise. So there's an advertising budget. Each one of them have their own database of clients. So there's database managers and all of that. Each of them, as separate companies, have their own CEOs, their own CFOs, and all these other things that they have to pay for. Above that and beyond, they have to have, given that they're going to be in different plans, they, they can't talk easily about sharing things. So folks... They, people who don't like Medicare for All have a problem, a math problem. They're, they don't realize that in, in health care, profit, in health insurance, profit is an expense. How is that? Because it's, it, it, the monies that go towards the profit that goes to the shareholders, the monies that go to advertising, the money that goes for capital costs that I otherwise would not have had to be spent, all of those are costs that are not going to solve health care. They are costs that are not going to, to fix that heart, to fix that lung. These are monies going for things completely aside from health care. It's a math issue. It's simple. It's simpler than most people want to tell you that it is. So why is it so difficult to explain? Because you have people say, oh, competition create, create lower prices. Competition cannot lower prices lower than cost. Remember that. Competition cannot lower costs lower than something cost. So when they say, okay, competition is going to drop the price of the MRI, that's bull. There's a certain low point in that MRI cost. There's a low point in everything. Competition can't do anything about that. And there's a limit to where competition works. And moreover, the health in the, the healthcare industry is not a market where you can talk about competition. You break your leg. You can't say, I want to go to this hospital or whatever. You're fainted on the floor with a heart attack. You can't say, I want to go to this particular hospital. It is not a market. It needs to be socialized because it is not a market. A market is, I want to buy this kind of bread or that kind of bread. A market is I want to buy this piece or that piece. The problem with America is we try to fit everything into a market economy. We are so indoctrinated into this form of economy that we think we can fit every part of our lives into this economy. No, the economy is there to serve us, not the other way around. So where a free enterprise type economy works, we go ahead and have that work. Where a socialist economy works, we have it in there. But you see, what these folks have done is they've corrupted the word. And in corrupting the word, when people hear the word, ah, oh, socialized medicine, they go, oh, my God, we're turning into a socialist state. Communism, communism. And the, the dictionary doesn't help when it defines socialism and communism about the same. Democratic socialism, and it's, it's ridiculous, people. It is completely ridiculous. So what we have to start doing is start thinking about humanity. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the page and start talking to the people on the internet. If you want to call in, folks, give us a call at 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. I'll be more than happy to carry your calls. Okay, Rudnin, 
We spend nearly double on healthcare what most other countries do, yet worse outcomes. Single payer will fix that. Absolutely so. There is absolutely no question. That is an absolute answer, my friend. And anybody telling you otherwise, they're corrupting the data. They're corrupting data that's already there. And Lawrence Swims, welcome aboard. Hi all. Kathleen, welcome aboard. Mike Cisek, no one has a right to your labor and no one has a right to enslave you to give your services to them, especially if you're doctor or doctor or nurses. To say the healthcare services are right is to say slavery is okay, and you are absolutely wrong, Mr. CSAC. We have the right as a society to determine what we want to socialize and what we don't want to socialize. And the reality of the matter is, uh, if you don't participate in the system, you are a free loader. You have a lot of folks who are libertarians who want to say they only want to pay for the things that they garner. Well, there's a reality. You cannot do anything in society by yourself. If you use a road, you're in the commons. If you're using oil, you're in the commons. If you're using any of these particular things, you are in the commons. And as such, you cannot isolate it as just something you want. If you're breathing good air, you're in the commons. So it's not about slavery. It's about society. It's about socialization. And that is the only thing that works. Now, if you want to go live in some piece of a forest where you get completely no services, you won't have to pay taxes either because you wouldn't be a part of the economy. So you can go in the middle of the forest and kill your own whatever, uh, 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 if you can find a national forest, kill whatever animals you end, eat them, use a few woods, burn it or whatever. You can do that if you want to. And since you haven't made any money that depend, that's dependent on our society, well, even the forest is protected by us taxpayers. So you'll be sort of freeloading, but we'll give you that. We'll kind of forgive you for that bit of freeloading. Okay. All right, Kathleen Morgan, one quick note on the birthright issue. Three of Trump's children should be the first to lose their citizenship. Ivanka was not a U.S. citizen when she gave birth to their three children. I so love you, Kathleen. I am, you know, I never thought about that. I never thought about that, Kathleen. Let's put that out there in the, in the ether space. Okay. Rose Ann Martorona, welcome aboard. Michael Rudden says, UK's national health system is beloved by its people, though it is mismanaged with insufficient funding. It's terribly funded, dear, correctly. But even as terribly funded as it is, they have better outcomes than the United States of America. Amazing. All right, Mike Cisek, Medicare for All is a government monopoly. Monopolies are inherently bad, wrong. Monopolies are not inherently wrong. Monopolies run by we the people cannot be inherently wrong because it is as benevolent or as odious as we want it to be because who, is, who runs it? We the people. Government is not some artificial entity. Government is not some dubious thing. Government is we the people. Monopolies are inherently bad or wrong because they remove all choice and competition. Well, that part is true. They remove competition. But in paying a bill, you don't need competition. How much competition do you need to pay a bill? The bill is going to be paid anyway. Who needs competition, dear? Where does one go if the government screwed up and didn't approve your much-needed health procedure? Well, you know what? Those items can be mitigated later. You have no choice past a government politician. By the way... People who have private health care right now, they don't get a chance to decide. I mean, right now, the, the private company says, ah, I can't do this because my bottom line will get hurt. So we just are going to deny service. Insurance companies, that's their design to deny service. Michael Redden says, imagine that a supermajority of Brits actually want to raise their taxes to fix the health care system. The new poll also found that nearly 90% of adults in England, Scotland, Wales believe the health service faces a major or severe financial crisis, a huge rise from 14% in 2014. Those willing to pay more into the NHS include 61% of the highest earners. According to the highly respected and long-running British social net, think about that. Responsible people. And of course... Michael C. said, say, you still have to go through the approval process to contract with the government. Such process is fraught with corruption. It's the no different than with... Look, the, uh, when people try to distinguish government and private industry, 
it, it frustrates me at times because the same corruption you have in government is the same corruption you have in private entities. The difference is that you can't go and look at the private entity's books. You can look at the government's books because it is the books belong to we the people, while for corporation, they are individual people with privacy rights and we have no ac access to it. Do not buy into the lies. Do not buy into the misinformation. Medicare for all is more efficient. There are no two ways about it. The contract bribery process is where the profit motives comes in. And you want to put it all on steroids. Oh my God, How what distortion. Michael, you're pushing competition to the government, politicians, and bureaucrats. It should be individual companies. Says who? What makes individual companies more benevolent than people elected by we the people? I keep wondering when people say that. When people want turn, to turn things over to the private sector, let's turn it over to the private sector, okay? What makes the private sector more efficient? What makes the private sector better? What makes the private sector uh, some sector that is less corrupting or corrupted than any government? It's a lie. It is a lie. We the people is accountable to we the people. The government is accountable to we the people. The corporation is only accountable to its shareholders. Nobody else. Where can corruption run rampant? The difference between the private corruption and public corruption is you don't see private corruption. Why? Because it's hidden until they find a way to break the veil of privacy. Folks, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science at all. We just have too many people playing the game that, oh, we need to get rid of socialized medicine because they fear that finally Americans will pay a whole lot less for a whole lot more. And a whole lot of fat cats that were making money that don't deserve the money that they make will no longer be doing so. Okay, s let's see what else. Michael, you mean like, uh, let's see what else we have here. I guess a print and press, a radio station or news organization is money free. Last time I checked, politicians needed money to get their message out. Of course they do. Hell, I need money to get our message out for health care. And I'm glad you talked about money because I was completely forgetting about asking folks to join Politics Done Right as subscribers. So here we go. Folks, here is the deal. I need you. Independent media needs you. We need you right now. Please go to patreon.com slash politics done right and become a subscriber of politics done right. Why? What do you get out of it? You get quite a bit out of it. You ensure that we are there on air continuously promoting the progressive message. And we are going to make sure when the Democratic Congress come to fold in November or in uh, effectively in January, we are going to keep the we are going to keep the fire at their heels. We are going to keep them hot. We are going to make sure that the same people that have the Republicans bribed right now, which will be ready to bribe all of our liberal politicians, including Ocasio Cortez. Don't think that uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, they're not looking at her as well. So, folks, let me tell you what we are going to do. The independent media is to keep everybody honest. Right now, we have to be on the backs of the progress. I mean, the, 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 the right wing. Next, we have to be on the backs of those who claim to be progressive. When they get to Congress, we're going to make sure they stay that way. Folks, seven, uh, to please do remember, go to patreon.com slash politics and right. Those of you who subscribe will uh, get my book, How to Make America Utopia. The book is still being written. Um, I'm writing. I'm on chapter two right now. And as I release chapters, I release it online so that those who are subscribers can read the chapters right away. However, when the book comes out, of course, you'll get a copy of the full book. If you go to our group, uh, How to Make America Utopia, if you give me a suggestion in the group and we adapt it with your permission, we'll cite you in the book. If we cite you in the book, of course, you will be known throughout the world. Why? Because it's going to be sold at Amazon and everywhere else. How to Make America Utopia. So, folks, give us, uh, please remember to go to patreon.com slash politics and right. Please become a subscriber. It's 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 purchasing it. It, it has become it's buying us a cup of coffee, buying us a cup of coffee. So those of you that are listening on Blog Talk Radio, Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right one word, and you can make a difference in progressive media. You can make a difference in making sure that we get the message out. Absent that, I don't know. 
where we go from there. But that is the only way we do. And that's my plug. I want to remind all the folks, though, that we don't only talk about giving to politics and right. We ourselves are subscribers to dailycoast.com, the democraticunderground.com, opednews.com, coffeepartyusa.com. In my case as well, the Democratic Party. We, we subscribe to a whole lot of stuff. We give little donations to all these organizations on a monthly basis. Why? Because we, knew, we know they need to survive. We know the progressive message has to get out there. And we have to do our part to do so, my dear friends. So I am asking you as well to please go to patreon.com slash politics and right and become a subscriber. You will be much appreciated. I need to get to, I would love to get to 100 subscribers this month. And... I'd like to get to a thousand subscribers by the first quarter or the second quarter of next year because that is something we need to continue to make this viable. Uh, we'll be sending out some emails as well, but we need to start increasing our subscriber base. And I'm asking you so kindly to go to patreon.com slash politics done right and become a subscriber. We need you. Anyhow, folks, going back to the program at hand, look. Let me tell you, we are still voting in Texas in the early election. I'm asking all of those that are listening to me right now to please go ahead and vote early if you can. In Texas, it is between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all week. It ends on Friday, and then, of course, there's a general vote on November 6th. But I want to remind you, those in Texas who are voting early, you simply need to go to any available uh, station, early voting station, and vote. You don't have to vote anywhere close to home in your, in, as long as you're, you're in a county. You can vote anywhere within your county early. Now, here's the deal. On election day, you must go to your precinct location. Only to your precinct location can you vote. But right now, it is so convenient if you early vote. Bank those votes. Bank those votes. And remember what I'm suggesting to people right now as an activist, journalist, blogger, political activist. Is it's, I'm stating it is existential that those folks who want things right to vote a straight democratic ticket. Personally, I have never done that before. This is the first time in my life. I went to the polls and I voted a straight line ticket. That is how, that is a type of, that is how, that's where we are right now. Why don't I ever do that? There's time, there are times I may want a Green Party person. There are times I may want a moderate Republican. There are times I would, I mean, that's just how it is. There are cer certain times that the best person for the job won't necessarily be of your party. But now, more than ever, now more than ever, folks, straight ticket Democratic, just like a whole lot of prominent Republicans are doing right now. Because unless we turn this ship around, we are going to sink faster than we're sinking right now. So, folks, please, I urge you, I urge you to go ahead and vote as soon as possible. And secondly, please do remember to vote Democratic straight ticket. Again, my last plug, please go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, slash politics done right, and become a subscriber of Politics Done Right. In doing so, you're supporting independent media. You're supporting independent media. And if you see all the things that we do, you see that it's not a game. We really go out there and we work for you doesn't come cheap has cost us a bunch but we believe we can change the system my name is Egberto Willies this is politics done right and you know how I finish this baby I am out <laughs> Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. 
This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is, at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Oh.